Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 104 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. We're back with pressure. Uh, last episode, we made an air compressor and a pressure chamber, got some aid into this room, set up some automation, and currently have the basics of pneumatocraft set up going. Now, uh, I have some really cool plans that I want to do with some of the more advanced uh, mechanics that pneumatocraft allows. They've been updated since I've last worked with them, and I really want to check them out. At the same time, I want to use them for some of my void-based kind of plans. So... I'm gonna get started working. Uh, there's a few things we need to work on this episode. We definitely have to make sure that this thing doesn't explode. So that's kind of a priority. Uh, we're also gonna want to set up the plastic factory. So we wanna convert oil, this stuff, into plastics. And then we'll probably teach the AE system how to do some smart stuff along that line. Uh, we will also do other things that are related to stuff. And that's probably along the lines of where we'll be by the end of the episode. So let's get started, shall we? Um, so air compressor. Yes, that is true. That's the thing that we have that we don't want to let explode. Because right now, it's a small, low-tier air compressor. It really can't do too much. Luckily, we can throw a pressure gauge on this thing. And I'm going to grab some redstone. And we're going to talk about what the pressure gauge does. This is a nice little device. We can drop it on, let's say, right around here. And... Um, Hmm, let's grab, you know, I want to move this down some. So let's move this for sure into an area along here. That looks good. Uh, the reason for that is now we have a nice flat area to work with. Uh, I'm going to throw a pressure gauge on this guy right there. And what this guy is, he emits a redstone signal strength relative uh, to the redstone, to the to the amount of pressure in here. So we'll notice that right now uh, we're emitting a redstone signal of power five. Cool. Four, three, two, one. That's probably, I would like it to be a little bit further. So let's do That should be good. Uh, so watch what happens. I can configure the redstone behavior to run on low signal. And then I'm going to throw some coal in there, a bit of charcoal. Cool. So what's going to happen is the redstone signal will continue to get stronger and stronger. And then when we get to a point, this thing uh, will no longer be allowed to run. Cool. And it will prevent the running of the air compressor anymore. So we don't have to worry about uh, the pressure, right? So as the pressure equalizes, it'll turn back on and eventually we'll get to a point, obviously with the uh, speed upgrade in here, it's just uh, producing a lot of pressure and we're in pretty good shape. So that looks cool. So we're about 3.5, 3.6 is the balancing point here. That's not bad. Now we can upgrade this uh, pressure gauge later and we definitely will. I might want to do something a little bit different though. I'm just afraid that there might be some chunk loading issues where this might eventually turn on when it shouldn't. Um, so I think I want this guy to actually run on high signal. So I probably want to reverse this. So let's do this. I'm going to pull this guys out. I'm going to switch him to high signal and then, well, I'm not sure if this is going to help to be honest with you. I mean, what we could do is check out, let me see. So you know what? I tried to change it up a little bit. Let's put it here. That should be cool. This should be allowing us to get up to four. So I'm actually going to keep it on low for now. We'll see if we run into any problems. So if I just throw a bunch of charcoal in there, uh, this should balance out right around four bars of pressure, which should be right about what we need it to be, which should be plenty. So we're at three... Right about four. But of course, remember, there's a lower bar percentages down here. So this guy's currently going to stop. So he'll, he should balance out, like I said, right around four. And that'll be a good number. Yeah, that looks nice. Cool. All right. Yeah, this looks pretty sharp. And like I said, we will have um, better stuff here uh, in the future. Next, let's consider where we're going to want to hook up all our good stuff here. I think right along this wall is where I'm gonna put my oil processing system. So let's talk about the things that we need to get that up and running. All right, so the main things we're gonna need are, number one, some refineries. One, two, three, four in total. 
refineries are probably going to be great. Uh, we're also going to want some fluid ducts. So we've got 24 of those. Let's get about 20 more. That should be cool. We'll let that cook up pretty quickly. Um, I don't remember exactly if I need retrievers or servos or whatnot. Have I taught my system how to make any servos? Yeah, resonant servos. Okay, cool. Go ahead and make a couple more of those just in case. And uh, I'm also going to want some tanks. And I'm thinking reinforced tanks should do. So let's do a total of three of these to get started more. So three. We're going to want some invar. Let's get like 100 of that stuff cooking. It can never hurt to have too much invar because you kind of use it all the time. Uh, there we go. So three of those. And then... We're also gonna want some hardened glass. So I'll cook those up. Um, let's get about 40 of them. In the meantime, we can go downstairs and get started. The one last thing I'm gonna need, I forget the name of it, but I'll recognize it as soon as I see it in any eye here. I think it's this, vortex tube. Yeah, that sounds cool. Does that sound cool? I want a vortex tube. Yeah, I do. Uh, this is going to create a pressure differential that basically creates heat. So let me design my system here and see what we're gonna have. If I had my vortex tube here and a line of refineries here, and then I'd probably want to have tanks that would probably look like they'd run along there. That would be cool, right? Um, and I could even have like more tanks eventually. So if I wanted to eventually have like multiple tanks for each type of fluid, that would be neat. Uh, but for now, this should work. And uh, that'll at least be a good starting point for some of the liquids and we can do stuff with them. Yeah, I think that'll do. So let's do it like that. Uh, so my vortex tube is gonna go here. Hopefully I can tap into it. Can I rotate this thing? I kind of can, but not really. That should do. So the red side is the hot side and the blue side is the cold side. And we're gonna basically be pumping heat into the refineries to refine all the oil that we're gonna get. Cool? So that's that stuff so far. Now hopefully I can pump some pneumatic tube stuff right into the bottom. And I can't. Either that or it's just not rendering correctly. I think it might just be not rendering correctly with the connection. I'm curious if I put this down here. I'm just going to test this with one piece of coal. All right, I have to remember how to hook this vortex tube up because I'm clearly doing it wrong. I thought this was all there was to it. Aha, there it is. <laughs> it's just hiding behind. All right, I knew that there would be like some kind of visual representation. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to make it so that I wanna have four of these compressors going here. So what I'm thinking is we could have them, if they were here, would that look neat? But I also want this to look halfway decent, right? That could be cool. And then you could kind of see it underneath. So to get this to work, we'd have tubes like that and then they could all pressurize. Now, uh, the nice thing about this is this vortex tube will kind of use up, um, I think, as much pressure as you can possibly feed it. Um, but remember, everything will balance. So if we have four of these going, we'll probably get up to about four bars. And if we have five going, everything will be about five bars, and that will be enough to cause an explosion. So if you want this to run at max efficiency, you're gonna want four air compressors here. Um, the other thing I'm gonna wanna do is snag some cables and some export buses. I 
and I'm going to export directly into these guys. Some coal. I think that should be plenty, right? There we go. Export buses times four. One, two, three, four. And uh, for now, I'm going to configure these guys to run on a low signal, but I do want to configure an off condition for them. Um, I'm just checking to make sure. I guess I'll be able to access the top. So I'm wondering if I want to move these down one level, just in case I want to give them a redstone signal from the top side, or if um, I'll be all right. I could probably always put covers there. For now, I think we're good. Um, do I want to move this over one? Maybe. So I'm going to have my tanks there. I'm thinking what we'll do is remove this stuff and we'll move this over one more. Am I using that? Yeah, but that's okay. Because what we'll have is this here like that. We'll put this guy back. Cable, export bus, put this junk away. We don't need him anymore. Well, I do want a piece of coal still. And that should do. Cool. I like the looks of that. And does this thing remember his redstone signal should be low? So basically not receiving a redstone signal means on. And he shouldn't transfer to the block underneath. And then let's get some glass. Uh, thickened glass should do. Yeah, that'll look decent. Cool. What do you guys think? Not terrible? And then we can see the four compressors running underneath there. Maybe I'll just pretty this place up a little bit real quick with uh, some of this stuff. So at least when you're looking at it, you're like, oh yeah, it looks good. Right? Not bad. Cool. All right, uh, so the last thing to do, obviously, and I'm gonna go jump into Ender Mini mode to do this, is configure these guys to receive charcoal, which means, come on. Come on, export bus charcoal, please. Don't tell me I have to pipe into the top. If you're only eyesighted on the top, I'm gonna be very upset with you. Air compressor, let's go. After making that look all nice and everything, you're only available from the top, aren't you? That would not be cool. Oh, that's mean. All right, uh, I'll be back in a minute. I have to put this in the top and I don't like that. All right, let's see how this looks. I don't love it, but it'll do. But at least we can see them down there, right? Yeah, that looks cool. Okay, so that'll get the uh, these things going. Let's go ahead and make sure that they're all configured for coal to be pumped in automatically. So 
So that should all be cooking up. Nice. And then we'll start getting lots of uh, pressure and therefore lots of heat. The other thing we're going to want to do is snag some coal. Now, I haven't been using this coal for a while, so I'm just going to go ahead and snag the ender tank directly. We can put these guys back on here. And we'll get our ender tank, place it on top, and just give it a good hit. And that should start filling up its internal buffer with oil. And then the oil, once it reaches the appropriate temperature, will start to refine down into the four different types of uh, stuff. So right now there's just not enough heat, right? But the heat is building up. So far we have about 1.2 bars of pressure. Uh, we can see the uh, cold going on this side, the hot going on this side, and that is definitely looking good. Cool. Well, not cool, the opposite of cool, hot. Yes, that, that one. Um, cool, so we can do that, and as soon as we hit the appropriate temperature, these problems should go away. I forget what temperature level it has to be at. Oh, that's cool, it runs on redstone signal too, I like it. Ooh, are we getting stuff? Yeah, look at that, we're producing diesel, kerosene, gasoline, and LPG. Nice. So now that we're here, let's get some more reinforced portable tanks. Good. And we'll set up our hardened fluid duct system. We've got that, and we've got servos. And down we go. Cool. So let's put these guys one, two, three, four. And we're gonna want them running through the wall. And we'll probably want to have them on separate lines, basically. So let's find a good way to run this. So we'll seal off these so that these guys don't connect with each other. That looks good. Cool, so one, two, three, four. That's interesting, it renders the that on the back there. I'm just curious, when I pump this out, this won't be oil coming out, right? No, good. It's that stuff. You won't go back in there now, will you? Probably not. All right, so that was probably diesel. So let's go ahead and run this guy first. So the diesel can be the first one here, obviously. I don't think... Oh, I can go directly into that. Neat. But I'd kind of like it to come up here. So let's do that. Yeah, that should look good. We'll probably have to snake back here for this one. If I want them to all look like they're coming out the top here, which I kind of do. We'll remove that connection. We'll remove that connection. And we'll have that there. Nice. So remove these guys. Cool. That looks good, right? I like it. All right, one more line to do. And this will go over here to this one. Might need a couple more of these. Luckily I crafted them already. So here...
And obviously this one's gonna go right up to here. Nice. How's that look? Not bad, right? Um, and then I can put some facades or something on here to, to guarantee these look a little bit nicer. So let's grab those thermal expansion facades. Or thermal dynamics facades. What do we got? Um, those are the applied energistics ones. So these are the applied energistics ones. I want the structure pipe. With that, right? I'll grab two sets of those, even though that's way more than I need. Try to make it look both nice and functional. So I'll just remove these for now. Put the covers on. And then put these back. Nice, right? I like it. Cool. So then all we need are the servos and set them to ignore. Fancy. I like it. Could probably put covers on this side of things too. That would probably make it look a little bit nicer. This might be a whole block base. That might be a little tricky to get the cover on without removing it. Yeah, see, I'm not able to click behind it. All right, maybe I'll move it later. But for now, I mean, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I won't complain about that. And we're starting to get some stuff. Diesel, kerosene, gasoline, and LPG, which is the stuff we need to make plastics. So we'll take a look at that in just a sec. All right, guys, the remaining components that we need to worry about here, the thermo pneumatic processing plant will convert, uh, given some coal, uh, some of this LPG stuff directly into liquid plastic. So we're gonna want to sneak down into bat size, go in to grab some hardened fluid duct type stuff. And we'll just give this guy a hit with the wrench, and that means he'll drain automatically into LPG. Nice, so that's cool. Um, this thing does need some heat though in order to operate so you can see it needs to be hotter than it currently is um, This thing actually takes upgrades. That's neat. I guess the vortex tube doesn't Okay um, I'm thinking I'll just tap into the same level of pressure and I think overall we might have lower pressure So we might need more things But we'll see for now pressure tubes going into here So this should be remaining at a steady four bars. So it's using as much as it's getting, which is the key um, to not exploding, because exploding is bad. Studies show exploding is bad. We'll sneak out over on this side. And nobody will know. Yeah. All right, that'll be my escape. So let's just... Pop these down, and I'm guessing what we'll wind up here is an equalized pressure of about seven bar, or will it go all the way up to four? And will these guys compress back up to four? I don't know, we'll see. So this is hitting about 2.6. So he's heating up. This side is getting warm, which is good. This guy is staying at about 2.8 bar. Okay. And then all we should need is some coal. And I believe that coal in here should show us the temperature line that we need to melt this down to plastic. Cool. He doesn't need any pressure for this, but other uses of this machine, which may not be implemented yet, uh, but will eventually exist, may need pressure. So you're at two and a half, you're at 2.7. So I think we're stabilizing right at about two and a half. Interesting. 
Is this easterly temperature continuing to climb? All right. So we should be getting close to the point where this is hot enough to do what we want it to do. I may need to add a few more compressors down there, but then again, we may actually wind up going with some more options along those lines. We'll see. But I'll be back in a minute once this finishes balancing out and equalizing. So I think we're actually close. It looks like maybe 100C is what we need to do to start getting some plastics. There we go. Nice. So we're getting liquid plastic. Awesome. I like the looks of that. All right. Then all we should need to do is get that plastic into the paint mixer. Or, yeah, the, pla the plastic mixer. And I believe that we pump some liquids into here. And that fills up and you'll see that the plastic will quickly cool down into items. Nice. So you're working all, you're doing great. So it actually doesn't require a huge amount. It looks like you get one piece of plastic for every 0.1 bucket, so 10 plastic per bucket of LPG. Nice, that's not bad. All right, so we've already got a bunch of plastics here. We can see the liquid has a pretty high temperature, but once it cools down, um, it'll go ahead and shrink down into the item version. I like it, okay. So let's cover this wall back up. And we might want to put some facades or something on here. We'll see. But for now, it's not too bad looking. Yeah, that looks halfway decent for now. We'll uh, maybe in a bit rearrange this. But yeah, I think that looks good. So we can use these liquids here. We can either break them down directly into LPG or we can use them as a fuel source couple options there uh, but we'll take a look at them later for now we're doing pretty good on plastics so this is how you make plastic and it's very easy from this point I believe there's plans for this to be a little bit more complex in the future but for now um, you can just use these to uh, make some things directly or you can just combine them with dyes so you'll see here that these combine with white dyes red brown etc to get the appropriate colored plastic so if you want for example the creeper plant seed plastic, you just combine it with green dye. Like I said, not sure if that's going to be like that forever, but that's how it is for now. Cool. All right, guys, I do have to make a quick change. There we go, liquid plastic filling up. You go there. Uh, the plant mix or the um, paint, the plastic mixer being next to the thermo pneumatic processing plant is a problem. It's heating up the hull of the plastic mixer, making it too hot for the liquid to cool down. So we actually have to move this thing. So I took that off of there. I'm gonna re relocate him probably here. This should be okay right here, I would think. So you should have quite a cool hull now. We can um, probably run you behind the wall. Yeah, let's do that. And then we will drain this out here. Ignored. You should start producing plastics again, which is good. The whole temperature is gonna rise, but we'll see it should cool down once it's done. That looks good. I'll facade this up in a minute over here. I don't think I have them on me. Uh, which one's the ones I want? These ones? Nope. Yeah, Applied Energistics, these ones. Oh, no, wait. I want the thermal expansion ones. See? I know I had it wrong. Um, stone bricks cover. Ah, they're called covers. Okay. Cool. Now, did you start cooling off? Yeah, 73C. I think this is dropping now, which is good. All right. And then what I wanted to do before we wrap up the episode real quick is just plug in an ME import bus so that we can import right off of here. 
Nope, nope, nope. All kinds of wrong. Haha, <laughs> one cable short. Luckily, I made a few more. Nice. So then you should be allowed to ME import bus your plastic. Awesome. So piping out the bottom is a thing for the plastic mixer. Uh, we can reattach. We've got more liquid plastic in here. And we've got a nice automated plastic processing system. I just need to pump coal in here. Um, maybe I'll sneak it up into the side through here. wonder if I can export bus coal into that. Not that that would have hurt anything, but it just looks nicer like this. Cool. Hopefully it's the side that we pump coal into. 17, 18, nice. That's cool. All right. So now we've got fully automated production of plastics. They automatically just pump all the coal into that thing. That doesn't look half bad. No, sir. Uh, with that, though, I think it's probably about time. What temperature are we at here? 69. Good. It will cool off the hole. Nice. So that will probably heat up the hole as the plastic dumps into here, right? You can see it quickly heating up, but that's okay. Nice. All right. So we're going to wrap up the episode here. We will come back next episode. Keep an eye on the things that we've worked on today. And then what I'm hoping we can do is start producing some of the more advanced stuff. So these are kind of like the processing of materials part of uh, Pneumatic Craft. Soon we will have using materials, which I'm kind of looking forward to. All right, guys, for now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys like uh, the episodes so far with Pneumatic Craft. I'm definitely having a good time. I like Pneumatic Craft. It's fun because there's a lot of infrastructure you get to build and you get to make it look halfway cool and stuff. So lots of neat things you can do with Pneumatic Craft. I definitely have a lot of fun with this mod. All right, guys, Daryl20 signing off. Take it easy.